Hey guys! Hi, how are you? <laughs> Come on in! Thanks so much for having us! Come on in, thanks for making the trip. Yeah, absolutely. You ready to do this? Yes. Alright. Where do you put it? Where do you? Kitchen. Come awesome. Hey, Alright. So. My name is Cheryl Bunce. My husband Bill and I have created the Live Music Society. We have hosted concerts and festivals featuring national touring musicians and bands since 2010. In that time, the musicians we've worked with have become our friends, and through those friendships, we've been lucky enough to hear their stories and find out more about the music they make. We have two passions in life, music and food. This show is actually about both. Each course has a question, each artist has a story. Each episode will feature new music, new food, and new friendships. In this episode, we are in Connecticut for dinner with Tim Warren and Eric Donnelly of The Alternate Roots. Bill and I look forward to sharing these special moments with you. So let's get started. I'll take it that don't come in here. <laughs> you'll never, you'll never want to go. I can smell that chocolate from here. I know. Well, you, half the trick is getting good chocolate. Oh, yeah, come on in. <laughs> all right, the pot's all yours. What? <gasps> no way. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to be eating dinner tonight, and I'm going to be in the kitchen. <laughs> We're going to find her in the refrigerator <laughs> in the pie. <laughs> so for years, obviously, we've been the fans sitting in the front row or standing in the front row. And this is always our opportunity. You know, we get to participate and experience your art. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully this is our opportunity to perform for you. Right. Uh, yeah, right? Exactly. You know? Like I'm in your front row. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Hopefully that... That's the idea. So, cool. um, so from this dish, you know, for you guys, you do a set list. You know, what are we going to play first, and progress. So this is not our biggest hit, <laughs> right off the bat. It's more <laughs> of a deep track. <laughs> okay. So this is a, a warm spinach salad, uh, but the spinach is cooked. Often a warm spinach salad is is raw, mm -hmm. and we've got uh, a citrus vinaigrette, and there's a, a soft boiled egg. Obviously, some bacon and red onions on there, so enjoy. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Along with the thoughtfulness that, you know, we try to put into preparing a meal and taking you from one stage to the next, we like to partner with beverage companies. Um, and in this case, we're working with Wild Hair. They are a micro cidery, so they're very experimental, and they're only using heirloom apples in Shenandoah Valley, Virginia. So let's get into it. Any questions, yeah. So each course has a theme. So um, our first course is getting to know you. Uh, <laughs> getting to know all about you. Okay. I've got 19 questions okay. that could potentially be getting to know you. Okay. <laughs> I love your approach, by the way. I love it. <laughs> uh, well, it's only 1 to 19, so I'll go with 11. That's okay. my number. All right, so interesting question. Would you rather be the worst player on a winning team or the best player on a losing team? That's a good one. That's a great We're question. just getting to know you, Tim. Oh, man. Um, I'd rather be the worst player on the best team because I think mastery and excellence and being at the top of your game is what, what I would be most interested in. Yeah, I, I, I think my, my instincts are, are similar. I think I would like to say that I would like to be the worst player on a best team. I think that's the, the, the more uh, admirable uh, way to look at that. But I, I, I don't know if I'm there yet. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, being totally I'm not so honest. <laughs> so I, 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 that, that's who I would like to be. I don't know if that's who I am um, or that's who I am yet. So. This is the hot sauce, right? Chili oil, I'll call it. This is a roasted cauliflower soup. It has uh, celery root in it as well. 
uh, and on top it's a, a homemade uh, chili oil. So Wild Hair has created Windrush and this is the second in their series. And what they've done with this is take their original hatch and they have used oak and chestnut staves in the batch as it is fermenting. All right, so the theme of the second course, okay. always, is questions that make you think. Oh, am I picking? You're picking them. I'll pick four. Uh, cast the greatest musical supergroup of all time and explain your role in the band. You must be included in the band. One of the first tapes my, uh, my, one of the only tapes my dad ever held on to was not a music guy, but uh, he had two tapes. One of them was Big Brother and the Holding Company. So Janis Joplin would be the, the front person of my supergroup. And I don't need to explain that or make excuses. She was not a perfect person, but she was the ideal front person. Good enough for my father, so good enough for me. And um, this is a, a, a little bit Hallmark-ish, but I would still have Eric in the band. Uh, Eric would be in the band. Forgive, no. forgive the. You're not, you're not making my band. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's fine. It's all right. Thank you for preempting your answer <laughs> by saying that. I put in my there was no solid. There was no. There's no favoritism in that. Okay. Well, this might be weird. Maybe it's like a duo, front, front thing, duo. But I think more than any other singer in my whole life, uh, Ella Fitzgerald was really the person who got me like singing the most. Mm -hmm. I just fell in love with her voice and her style. So she and Janice would, in my perfect mind, in my perfect imagination, would just find a way. Like, when, like even when I hear that question, like my brain doesn't go to like, oh, who would I have sing? Who would I have play drums? Um, it, it, that's not where my brain goes. Like my brain goes to, to guitar players. Um, so I'll answer the question in kind of a bizarre way. Um, and in a very current way, which is which is nice. Um, you know, growing up, there were so many influential people. But I think there's there's a lot of guitar players that are around right now that I find extremely inspiring. And I'll even take it one level further. There's a, there's a lot of guitar players that I'm friends with that I find extremely inspiring, and that I get to work with. Um, and, and so many people come to mind. Um, but he, but but going one level beyond that, there's a there's a couple guys out there right now who I just think are, are, are taking the guitar to, to some amazing, amazing places. Um, uh, uh, one guy comes to mind is a guitar player out of California named Blake Mills. Mm. Um, Love Blake. Can we go to Sam oh, yeah, he, yeah, he's he's just, you know, he's one of the best I've ever heard. Um, a New York City guy, uh, primarily a jazz guy, but he does a lot of things. Um, a guy named Julian Lage, who I've got to see a bunch this year. Um, and even though most people think of him as a songwriter, uh, and he is one of the best songwriters um, ever, in my opinion, um, but I also think he's a great guitar player. And just an overall musician, the way he puts everything together, uh, Jason Isbell. Sure. So Absolutely. those are the guys that come to mind of, you know, so I, I think it's it's probably insightful when you say that, like those are the guys that come to my mind. I don't know what kind of band that would be, it'd be a bunch of guitar players. <laughs> So they say that um, a chef is judged by the quality of his roast chicken. Really? Yeah. You know, and, and similar to you guys, I mean, you don't go out and play a song that you've never played before. You spend a lot of time in rehearsal and you get it right before you bring it to the stage. So, um, you know, our roast chicken is something, this is not the first night that we've made roast chicken. Uh, so uh, it's a roast chicken that's been marinating in buttermilk and thyme. Hot sauce, hot sauce, yep. uh, peppercorns, mm -hmm. four days in the fridge. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then uh, just some really good roast vegetables on the side. And for you, Tim, because you like peppers, we have just some roasted red peppers uh, and, and chili jalapeno yes. peppers on the side. Uh, and then we have just some very simple sautéed cherry tomatoes uh, with garlic and some good rustic bread. What we have with um, Wild Hair is a small batch cider. And what they did is they experimented by dry hopping. So when you do take this one, you're going to need to go with the aroma first. Okay. And then you're going to think, uh, I think I got poured a beer uh, just because of that dry hopped. 
aspect that they've given it. So it should it'll smell like a beer, but yeah. not taste like a beer. Yeah. yeah, it does smell like a beer. And dry? we sip first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So it's family style. Go for it. Yeah. Oh, lately, the winds have been threatening. Things have been getting so hard to control. But your love is holding me close like a rope on a flag. Won't let me go It won't let me go well, you can't So how about a question? Oh sure, this is question number three. <laughs> okay. If you're keeping track of it. Uh, the TV and movie business have been able to adapt to a subscription-based streaming business model and you know, for example, Netflix and Hulu why hasn't the music business been able to make the same transition and make money at streaming? I don't know if I disagree with that statement, but I think that streaming is still the way, I mean, I agree that you know there's not a lot of money in it, but I still think it's the way that most people get their music, you know, whether it's Spotify or YouTube, mm -hmm. which you know, pay for. So I, I, I disagree with that statement. In fact, it's the way a lot of people get music, and it's probably the most relevant way people get music. So with, with that being said, you know, I think the, the comparison is, is, is valid. You know, I, I think, you know, if, if you, know, you, you, you listen to most of your music on Spotify, and then, you know, you would say that, you know, you do stream music. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as the revenue, I don't know if it's as instant, but I do still think it's relevant and important. So I, I would I would say that, in my opinion, that music and you know film and TV are on are more similar than dissimilar at this point. Those are good metrics for the things that are working. You know, the things that are are streamed the most are the also the songs that are downloaded the most. Those are also the things that are are the most valuable. Mm -hmm. It's it's more of a metric that you can rely on for that. And I'm not, you know, I, I'm not opposed to that, um, if that makes any sense. No, absolutely. Yeah. So I think my thought on that is, when you compare the number of musicians to the number of filmmakers or television show makers, there are so many more musicians, and it is so much easier to make music than it is to make a TV show or a film. And so you have this... Uh, you have this flood of supply. Mm -hmm. And the demand is probably consistent throughout the three, the movies and the TV and the music business. But you have so much more supply in music that, you know, if you go on Spotify and they're paying you one ten thousandth of a penny for a stream, that's based on the supply, not the demand. And that's a tricky game to throw stones at because it's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dog my fellow artist for making music. I'm not going to be like, hey, everyone, stop writing songs and putting them out there so I can be more successful. <laughs> um, but the economy of scale about it is very stifling. And the flip side of that coin is that Justin Bieber makes plenty of money. And he makes a lot of money from streaming. And you can say you don't like Justin Bieber. He doesn't deserve the money. But he's popular. Mm -hmm. And... So he earns that money. His money is based on his ability to make music people like. And he's doing fine. So I, I sleep at night and I, 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 I hope for a better circumstance for my own music career. Um, and I'm not going to copy Justin Bieber or anything like that. But there are artists that are new that are proving the fact that there's enough money to exist on just to sustain yourself as an artist in the music business. But it's harder because there's way more people competing for that dollar. And uh, I welcome the competition, but it doesn't make it any less competitive. No, that's great. Uh, and, and, and not to backtrack, but to, or to go backwards, but I guess the simplest way I can answer that question is 
I use all of those products we're talking about. Exactly. You know, I use Spotify. I would be a hypocrite if I complained about not making enough money off Spotify. I, I, I like Spotify. Right. You know, I like the fact that our music's on there. I like the fact that people check our music out. Um, that's where I check out most of my music. And if I like it, I buy it and I put it on my iTunes. And, you know, I consider that, you know, that, that's that's the streaming model and you know as i said before our most successful songs on spotify are the ones that sell the best those are the ones that have done the best for us overall so i i i'm not i have no issue with that All right, we're gonna go a little decadent here. What is this? This is the equivalent of Cheryl taking a five-minute solo. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love the analogy. I love it. I love the analogy. Yeah. So, every day we have this zest for life, and you can't skip out on it. If you see the flower, you need to stop and smell it. If the baby's crying, you want to console it. Whatever the moment is, you have to take it. Same thing with dessert. Why should we mince around with it? Let's just go for it. So what we have today is a chocolate velvet pie and the crust is made with coconut flour. So you definitely get that mouthfeel of this just luxurious chocolate that's bittersweet and wonderful. And then you get that really smooth coconut flavor on the back end. Um, what it's topped with is edible gold leaf. Um, I think we need to go for the gold in everything we do, no matter how big, no matter how small. And that's what we're doing with this dessert. So it's, it's just purely for enjoyment and just to kind of lose yourself in, in the uh, texture and the flavor. So what we paired it with is Wild Hair did a Harvest Moon. And what they did is they amped up the effervescence level by increasing the carbonation. So what you're getting is not sweeter, but you're getting that familiarity of um, a spumante or a champagne or a sparkling wine wow. in a cider. So it's, it's very refreshing and I hope you enjoy it with the richness of the chocolate. Yeah, sure we will. You can already see <laughs> you've got good. that champagne kind of top to it. What we wanted to do with the last question was essentially create a process, it's not a question, uh, that goes from dinner to dinner. So it'll start here tonight, Yeah. but it's gonna carry on into the next dinner we do with, happens to be Tony Luca in Nashville, I think. Cool. Uh, and so what I'm gonna ask you to do is write one line from a song we're going to write a song, but okay. tonight, one line. Uh, but since we're starting tonight, uh, that could be the opening of the song or the opening of the chorus. Doesn't matter. Okay? Okay. But I'm going to give you a theme. All right, so the theme is standing in the middle of chaos and control. I already know what I want to say. And, and maybe we should each write one. Well, and, and let's see how good yours is. Yeah. <laughs> If I can beat it, I will. If I can, I won't. Okay. Well, what did, what did you guys say? What did you say? Oh, I wrote, I could not taste before I had appreciation. Wow. There you go. I think that's our answer. How? Mic drop. <laughs> how did that come to you? Like, how did that come to you that quickly? I don't know. I mean, uh... Was it the sentence I read that came to you that quickly, or you had that in your head beforehand? I don't know. How did you learn how to roast chicken that way? <laughs> how the hell did you make that pie? <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't even want to finish it because I don't want it to be over. Thank you like, so much for that. I love it. I Good. could not taste before I had appreciation. Yeah. There you go. Anyway, thanks for cooking. Wow. Thanks for I'm not even done yet. I know. Thanks for, to bed. That, was, that was incredible. <laughs> thank you guys. Oh, so well, awesome. thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers to you. Incredible. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Fun. Thanks. That was a blast. 
So in the spirit of singing for our supper, we're going to we're going to play a little song about gratitude and uh here we go. <laughs> To be humble, to be kind It is a giving of the peace in your mind To a stranger, to a friend To give in such a way that has no end We are love, we are one We are how we treat each other peace we are one we are how we treat each other and nothing more and to be bold to be brave it is thinking that the heart can still be saved and the darkness can come quick all the day Peace. 